everybody I'm back with another video this video is going to be taking a look at the Champions League match between Inter Milan and Atletico Madrid now before we get into the tactics behind the match check out the description there you can find both my books my tactics course live tag pro which is the program I'm using to make this video and a new link to the discord where we continue the conversation and try and help people learn so all that is in the description be sure to check out the links there and subscribe to the channel for new updates. Now let's get right into the tactics of the match. So as we see here, Inter in possession go with their 5-3-2 with Lissandro Martinez playing a key role, creating three tens with one holding midfielder, often dropping outside of the space between the two forwards and the three midfielders from Atletico Madrid. Now this was a little bit different approach from Atletico Madrid as they would drop Lorente as a right side midfielder to create a 5-4-1 shape. This would create a different problem for Inter Milan to solve in possession. Atletico would use this to then try and set up wide pressing traps so they would go very space oriented, kill the space between the line around the three tens and force play into wide areas where they could then go and press and then latch on to players man-oriented and try and create a pro positive transition to then end up through central areas and attack the back three and the holding midfielder of Inter Milan in attacking transition. The wide players, the wing backs, would be key for the pressing traps as the wide midfielders, Lorente and the left side midfielder, would typically be oriented towards the wide central defenders looking to jump and press vertically forcing Inter to play out wide, which then would be the cue for the wingbacks to jump and try and arrive as the ball is received by the wingback of Inter. So the key for Inter was using the wide area and avoiding these pressing traps from Atletico Madrid and the player who is usually free or could really impose themselves in possession was Lissandro Martinez dropping in because if we have this four chain of midfielders we can imagine then jumping Lissandro Martinez would be the free player around the two holding midfielders of Atletico when the press was activated so he had a big role in possession and they could have capitalized on more when Atletico Madrid would shift into the wide area and go more man-oriented with Lissandro coming from a higher position and dropping deeper, there's a lot of opportunity for him to then affect play. So one of the key movements for Inter Milan is Barella dropping deeper outside of the half space and affecting the press. So by coming deeper, he would release the wing back or the right center back of Inter Milan and in this situation the holding midfielder is also deeper changing the way Atletico would have to press and they wouldn't engage in typically these situations where the ball is stable in the first line of buildup for Inter Milan so Atletico is more passive denying space and waiting for the right cue to then trap possession but with Barella dropping deeper, we can already see this would affect the way Atletico would be able to press in these wide positions. We have pinning from the center forward on the ball side looking to affect the central defender and the ball side center back with freedom from Lissandro Martinez to arrive in the half space or Barella to play and arrive from a deeper area to face forward against the back line thanks to pinning the center back not allowing them to jump into this space but with Barella coming deeper and circulation goes across we also have an overload on this side which if activated the press we could potentially isolate the far side and get some underlapping runs or triangle movements from the weak side three players making up this triangle that I'm highlighting here. But now we see the effects of Barilla dropping deeper. Here Darmian takes up the space out wide and now we see the three tens that we were talking about from midfield with the wide midfielder now having to press Barella, who was taking up the space between the lines in and around the half space. So with the wide midfielder pressing now the rhythm's a little bit disrupted. The wing back is oriented towards Darmian looking to jump but with this, as we mentioned, we have this 3v2 that could be exploited with different movements like a channel run, then followed by a player coming across to then play and enter, or Barella playing and following his pass into the half space. So all of Inter Milan's on the ball side 
was very vertical, and they weren't afraid to solve out wide with these three-player combinations in and around the half space. But as always, because of the way Atletico Madrid would press with one forward, locking to one side was difficult, especially when they had Barella drop deeper. So Inter usually had situations where they could circulate possession, which would then cue Atletico Madrid to jump and try and force them back to the goalkeeper so Atletico could defend higher up the pitch. Now the adaptive shape in midfield from Inter Milan would see the back three and it's important to note their asymmetry and their distances a defender orienting himself to his wing back connecting in the wide area and then here player on the right center back position playing more narrow connecting more with the midfielders creating isolation out wide now the midfield box changes the references of the atletico madrid team and we see players jumping from atletico's midfield and potentially freeing up players in the half space but which is covered by very aggressive center backs from Atletico Madrid. So as we see here, Atletico Madrid central defenders, especially in the wide center backs, jumping to the half space so the midfield four can be free to go and press the midfielders of Inter Milan and potentially create pressure on the first line of buildup, forcing play into wide positions or baiting them to play long to try and take advantage of the jumping center backs from the on the ball cues we see here. Now a very common shape from Inter is this asymmetric 5-3-2. Now what this would do is Borello be on the right hand side playing between the lines referencing the outside midfielder and Koke the left central midfielder with the center back and the wing back as his key references using pinning from his center striker to then try and create space between the lines or often dropping deeper outside the lines of the defense and mirroring him is vacant space in the half space allowing players from Inter Milan to either use this space from a deeper area even a central defender jumping or runs in behind often though Lissandro Martinez would come deeper occupying this space dynamically to try and get him behind the midfield line of Atletico, especially when Lorente was so aggressive jumping. They could either play through on the ball side through the midfielders, trying to create a third man to disrupt the press, or Lissandro Martinez could read the space and the midfielders jumping so aggressively to drop in and use this space for himself. Atletico Madrid shape of 5-4-1, as we mentioned. Lorente pressing very aggressive against the wide center back, creating a gap between him and his holding midfielder but because of the vacant half space this was acceptable in this moment and really allowing the two holding midfielders to jump if Inter Milan in possession went with two holding midfielders like they do in this situation because of the protection they have with their three center backs and the compactness that they provide around the two holding mids two holding midfielders of Inter Milan. Now we're going to look at the man-oriented pressing system from Atletico Madrid. Here we have the ball triggered going to the wide center back, wide central defender who again is referencing his wing back in the wide area positioning himself wider and we see midfielders ready to jump wide center backs ready to jump and wing wing back in range to jump with Lorente pressing very vertically encouraging the pass out wide for then Atletico to trap and get numbers around the ball to win possession now it'd be crucial for the defenders on the far side to get on the inside or the ball side shoulder of the attacker so they could have superiority positionally if they were to opt for channel balls because of the space created in behind. Again with the ball going out wide we'd have players pressing in threes creating 3v2s around the ball being more ball oriented denying anything through and along and when available we could press the back pass or the underneath pass but prioritizing winning the ball in numbers to then be able to create positive transitions to play forward. Now the final picture is when play is forced backwards, this is a big cue for Atletico Madrid to jump very aggressively and latch on. Griezmann would do the lock against the goalkeeper. Lorente would come from the far side creating access to the most central defender and as we see the two midfielders would come very aggressive because of the protection they have from their three central defenders with the wing back delaying his run allowing them to play in a wide area making it harder for Inter to progress in the wide area because of less space but making it also less dangerous if the press was broken through the wide area but giving the defenders the advantage because there's less space so it's easier to make a defensive action to then play forward and 
Griezmann's positioning in transition, positioning himself between central defenders within the frame of goal, giving him the best chance if transition were to occur to have a direct pass and a scoring option right in front of goal in their match versus Inter. So this was the key phase that I saw, especially in the first half between Inter and Atletico Madrid. I hope you guys enjoyed the match and the video, and I'll see you in the next one.